Okay, so I'm going to be playing the um, jam entries for GDFG's monthly game jam number 15. Uh, and for this jam, the theme was Don't Stop Moving. Whether you do it directly or indirectly, incentivize a frantic pace for your game and by keeping the player moving. And the modifier was self-made music. So practice your music making skills by making it yourself. Uh, this is going to be really fun, I think. So the first game we are playing is called Wombat by Murphy's Dad. Uh, and so the description says, disclaimer, uh, ooh, recommend he played in a mobile browser. Okay, I might need to try that in a minute. But anyway, um, disclaimer, I wouldn't call this a game. It's an earned proof of concept I've made for experimenting with AI. Earn the wombat's trust with food and collect all the gold on the island, 10 pieces. Collect the apples, uh, then press A button or space on the keyboard and to, to place a picked up apple. The wombat likes apples and will like you if you give him one. If the wombat likes you, he'll follow you and dig up treasure for you. Cool. Got no idea what to expect. Let's have a go. So it does look like it works with controller support. So let's start the game. Objective: collect the ten pieces of gold buried throughout the island. Okay, so we've got on-screen controls. That's pretty cool. We've got a menu button. We've got Apple UI and Coin UI, and of course some wonderfully nice atmospheric music. Okay, so uh, there we go. Controller support works. And A. I've already forgotten what A does, but I'm going to walk over to these sparkles here and push A. Nope, nothing. We'll get this apple. Okay, so A is to place the apple. Hey, you can tell I've already forgotten literally what the point was of the game. The music's nice. Quite atmospheric. The footsteps are a little bit disruptive. That's a wall, so that marks the edge of the map. Maybe the footsteps are a bit loud? Or maybe it's that they are the same. A lot of advice that's given for making sound effects is if there's going to be a sound that is repetitive, you should... oh. You should change the pitch a little bit. If you put, add some rand, some pitch randomization to it, so it doesn't isn't always the same. That should help. At least that's what I was told. There we go. Ah, oh, hello, little guy. Those heart particles were very cute. Okay. Ah, oh, yay! It gave me a coin. That's nice. It's <laughs> I don't even have to pick up the apples, it just does it for me. Thank you. What about this one over here? Yep. Very nice. It doesn't seem to run out- oh well. If it does run out in its love for you, I can't tell because it does keep eating the apples we find along the way. here. The fact that I can't walk through the, um, the wombat kind of is a bit disruptive when I first try to get the coin. So, see, I can see it's got the coin, but I can't get to the coin unless I walk around it and go to the front. Maybe the coin collider should be bigger so that I can pick it up from a bit of a distance so I don't have to walk around the wombat. And maybe with the UI, I mean, the fact that I'm carrying apples, I mean, I can 
get some hearts off them, so that's quite fun. But there doesn't seem there isn't currently any need for me to have picked up the apples and to give them to him. Also, once he's following me, I can't really even get to the apples to pick them up because he'll beat me to it because he's faster. Um, in terms of the UI, it might have been nice if we had an indication that 10 was the target because I've already forgotten. Well, I, I remember, but I could have already forgotten how many I was aiming for, or how many there were. And so some sort of indicator that 10 is the total I'm aiming for so that I know I've got an objective to get to. There we go. And 10. Cool. You've won. Great. And now I can just give him apples. Give him. <laughs> okay, I mean, fantastic. The AI works really well. I don't feel like he ever tried to attack me or walk through me. Um, pathfinding is good. He can make his way through the trees. Doesn't get stuck. Um, the art is good. I like the tiles. I like the character's art particularly. He looks quite cute. Um, I'm not sure if you've used an acid pack or whether you uh, made the art yourself, but the kind of icy border around the edges... I'm not sure that fits with the general rest of the theme of the game. I mean, it reminds me of ice. It might... actually, maybe it should be water. If it's supposed to be water and I'm on an island, that makes more sense, actually. Um, but yeah, this hard edge is kind of a bit... Um, off-putting, in a way. Maybe maybe the tile set needed, like, a transition tile from soil to water, even if it was just the border around the ground tile. If it attaches to water, it should have some sand or some gravel or some kind of different texture, just to make that a little bit more of a blended approach. Um, and obviously you can see that the apple and the coin, the pixel art, is very different there. You can see that the apple is just an apple image and the, the coin is an actual pixel art coin. Um, but these are really, really minor nitpicks. Like, this is really good. Um, yeah, really enjoyable. Great stuff. Good prototype to work on. Um, Cool, thanks very much. Good job, Murphy's dad. Uh, on to the next game. Bastis, stop touching the ball. Let's see, it's a web build. Fantastic, I can play that. Shooting pool is, shooting pool is fun, but waiting for your opponent to shoot isn't. The solution is called Stop My Ball. Uh, the game is meant to be played on a phone, but works on computer too. Click and hold, or touch your screen to drag and aim. Hold space or the on-screen button to build a power. Release to shoot. The goal is to sink all the red balls before the opponent sinks the yellow ones. Okay. It is made entirely on my on a phone. The coding is done using an app called PlayJS. Cool. Stop my ball. Game dev field guide. Roughly 70 hours. Dude. Good job. That's a lot of work. Right. Let's have a look. <laughs> Okay, the music is loud. Okay, we're going to start with easy, for sure. Let's have a go at this. Okay, so I get to break. What's this guy up here? Oh, and away we go. Okay, I do not yet know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm not the only one controlling the ball. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to be able to do anything from there. Okay, I just have to be I have to be crazy with this. I just have to keep hitting it. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> oh dear. I mean, it's it's definitely meeting the theme of don't stop moving. And I'm definitely losing. Ah, oh, yes, come on. I got one. Stop it, computer. I defy you. I can't line anything up. There we go. Oh no! Definitely haven't got a second to think about this game. caught up. I'll give some feedback in a second, I just need to actually get to the end of this game. Whatever did you mean by easy? Ah, almost. Oh no! Yes! Oh dear. Okay, so, thoughts. First of all, the surrounding room looks fantastic. Really good um, level design. The table looks good, it feels right, there's lighting on the balls, everything works fantastically. Um, it's really focus inducing, like you cannot think about anything else other than the game while you're playing. Um, I get the feeling that there's like a fixed timer on the opposition AI. It might be a bit randomized, I'm not sure, um, but it does definitely feel like there's always a bit of time. And also, I feel like when you take your shot at the cue ball, it nullifies the force from the previous shots. So it's not like you're adding physics to the ball, which is what you would be doing if you were playing in the game. So if in a game I set the white cue ball off in one direction and then hit it again from a different direction, I'm not nullifying the force, I'm adding to it. Obviously that makes the game much harder, um, like way harder. Um, but, um, but that's kind of my expectation of what it would be. Given that I now know that you're always nullifying the force and starting in a new direction, that actually makes it really easy to play against the opponent, because you just have to wait for them whenever they take a move, take a turn, when you hear that cue of the ball being hit when you didn't do it, you have to then just instantly hit the ball again in any direction to stop them from taking their turn. Um, 
So on easy, it's it's it is actually having played it quite easy to to play against the AI. Um, what else would I say? It would be nice to have visual indication of that. So it would be really nice to see, um, like you have like my visual indicator telling me that um, you know I'm using the power and when it lets go, it kind of gives that information. It would be nice to have that for the AI as well. Have like a different color one. Possibly matching the colors with the balls because once I, I realized when I started playing the game I instantly forgot which balls were my balls and which balls were the AI's balls so um, Yeah, making it clearer which balls you've got um, I like the scoreboard that shows you um, You know how many balls are left it's nice for the AI, but it does mean I've got to look up and see what's going on there rather than having something on my screen all the time. Um, and then beyond that, I think the mechanics are good. Like, the game is good. I think um, more visual feedback, like, you know, uh, a trail on the ball, particles when you have collisions, all that sort of stuff might make it more... F I don't know. Less realistic, because right now you're going for a lot of realism in here, but maybe just, like, a bit more... A gamey and fun kind of juicy type thing. Um, I'm just gonna go for crazy just for the effect, but I'm not sure how that's going to change. Oh, instant win. I assume this is just going to take... Yeah, so this is probably just going to change the timing of the other the opponent. Is there anything else on here? Oh, I've just gotten one of their balls in. Excellent. Okay, so considering that this is this game mode's called crazy, I can see none of the craziness. I expect like, you know, almost every second the opponent to be taking a turn. Like literally this This is probably harder, which is fine, but I'm not getting any of that craziness right now. I mean, I I will definitely lose. But if you're going to call a game mode crazy, it needs to be literally like ridiculous. Um, but kudos on having difficulty settings in a jam game, and a good thing making the easy one not too hard, because the worst thing in the world is having a jam game that is so hard that you can't beat the easy mode. But yeah, um, you can see there, I've got the, the balls left chart. It doesn't actually show me in any way, in any kind of indication, which one I am, or whether I'm winning or losing, it's all the same color. So maybe it should say something like player versus computer or something. But no, the game works really well. Oh, uh... Some way of getting out of the game. I'm expecting if I press cancel or escape, a menu to come up so that I can leave the game. That would be really good to have as well. The music's fantastic. It's... Immersive, but I kind of have no way of putting it. It's it's upbeat. It's jolly. It's immersive. I'm just like enjoying it And also having this automatic game playing in the menu screen is a really good idea um, Although maybe for this particular um, I don't know what I think about it I was thinking maybe it'd be good to have kind of a fixed camera angle for this one like an overhead camera angle rather than the in-game style kind of just following the game around um, just a thought. Cool. Anyway. That was, uh, Don't Stop My Ball, Don't Touch My Ball by Bastis Bastis. Cool. Next we're playing BioRift, uh, by Gamer Dave, or Designer Dave, as he's called on the, uh, uh Discord. So he's actually been sharing quite a lot of his progress for this game, so I'm super excited to play it. Um, let's have a little quick look at the description. Uh, the colony ship Kar Kardashev was on a 314-year mission to New Hope, but something went wrong. All systems are down, and you have been neurologically connected to the Robotech to repair the ship and ensure the safety of thousands of passengers. Uh, this is really unpolished and forced me on the first game jam. Long list of things to finish. Yada, yada, yada. Uh... Let me know in the comments if you think this concept is solid. 
cool. Decided to make a full game of this over time. Sounds good. Let's have a go. Okay. Uh, I think there is no sound. Uh, well, no background sound, at least. I think there's SFX only. Biotech robot book sequence begin offline. Status, AI error, lots of errors. Artificial gravity error. <laughs> All primary systems offline. Engaging Hail Mary protocol. <laughs> Very nice. Connect to BioRift. WASD, rotating forward and reverse thrusters. Uh, e to charge device. And Q to remove charge from device. Adding or removing charge requires proximity. Get close to a device to connect power cable. Some collisions drain power by using the shields. Okay, test control. Collect five power cells. Ooh, I like the um, sliding doors transition. That's nice. Oh, oh I've got the keys wrong. My bad. Okay, so that's forward thruster. Okay, so that red line seems like a bad thing. Navigating level, there's a power cell over there. Let's go grab this. Okay. The movement mechanics are solid. There's a timer, I hadn't noticed that until now. Max power 210. Boom, hitting the wall. Ah, oh, I like that effect. I like that kind of shield burst. That's good. Oh, physics on the bo on the boxes. That's nice. Maybe I can push past. Come on. Ah, uh, soft locked. All right, let's get you out of the way. Oh, yes, zero gravity. That's a thing. Okay, so there's no friction between the floor. Get that. Oh, max power's increased. Did it? Yep, the max power increases with the cells. I like the timer, because the timer instantly makes me want to speed run this. I think I've got five power cells, so yeah, the block is gone. And exit. Next level. Very nice. So I don't think I noticed the difference between the red cell and the blue cell, so I'm going to try and see if I can figure that out. By just going really slowly here. So the red cell increased my max power? but not my power by a lot. The blue cell gives me more power, I think. At least that's my impression. I wasn't paying lots of attention. Okay, so what are we doing here? I didn't even check what our mission is here. I assume to fix something. Now, do I use power by navigating the room, or is it just when I hit things? One hundred and ten. One hundred and seventy now. Okay, dead end. Turn around. Try and find another way. I really like the art for this game. I wonder if you did the art yourself, because like this workstation is very detailed. Might be a tile set, considering this is a jam and it's your first jam. Lots of red cells there. Question is, do I want lots of red cells? I'm finding the uh, movement mechanics very satisfying. 
really quite enjoyable navigating the level like this. It seems very solid. Ooh, charging station, I think. Okay, I thought I needed to press E to charge. That might be fixing things, though. Okay. Anyway. Full power now. That's good. Means I can go a little bit for speed now. What have we got in here? Oh! That looks like something I need to fix. Oh! <laughs> nice and ominous. Some things attacked that guy. Wonderful. Very nice bit of detail. How close do I have to be? I mean, I'm basically making contact now. Hmm. Maybe... Oh, I think maybe that's a... Um, a cryogenic freezer pod or something. Fine, that might just be lore. Rather than something I need to investigate further. I feel like this is where I've come from. Yeah, I think I've been here before. I've got a mini-map. I hadn't noticed that. And I can just about make out where things are on that. But yeah, the minimap is very subtle. I'd put a little bit of a border on that, because it doesn't stand out from the rest of the game enough that I've even noticed it this entire time. Um, and maybe the minimap should have like a fog of war effect, where it kind of, the rooms that you've already been in are more clear and more easy to see, but the rooms you haven't been in are still quite dark. I think that would make it more useful, because right now all it is is it's just a, a zoomed out version of the level. Um, okay, so this looks like the exit, but I can't get through there yet. Okay, I need to crash less. I've lost most of my, I've lost more than half of my power. What's this down here? Just a red light? Don't know what that means. Come back to that. Okay, I need to find a way through to the right. Looking at the minimap. I can't quite make out where the way is. I might have to make my way back up to that charging station. Which isn't here. I don't run out of power. But yeah, again, like I said, the movement mechanic seems really well developed. Very satisfying. Oh! That was a hidden room there. It didn't light up when I went through it. That's interesting. Sneaky. I'd say, more than anything else. I guess there was nothing to prepare me that that was an option, or a possibility. But yeah, okay, so the red cells definitely are just mainly for increasing my max power. They don't actually increase my current power very much. So maybe they're like, drained power cells? That could be a thing. Okay, I mean, it was very helpful to have those extra power cells, but I still don't know 
how to get to the end of this level. Well, I think I've seen the end, because I've seen the barrier. But I don't quite know where I need to go to get to the right. So I'm going to start by recharging again so I don't die. I'm pretty sure that was up here somewhere. Great. And then I need to find a way over to the right of the level somehow. I like the sound effect for the charging. I like that it gets louder as well, but maybe have that... M getting quieter again? Yeah, you, with, a, with a long noise like this, you want it to change slightly. So you either want to change the pitch slightly over time, or you want to change the loudness. So that's just, just, there's a noticeable change, and it's not just noise. Repetitive sounds that change, even ever so slightly, are much less annoying than repetitive sounds that are just literally, literally repetitive. Okay, that's the first secret room. I don't feel like there was anything else on that side. Is there something over here? There's a light there, but I don't know what to do with that light. Okay, there's a pause. Oh, did I kill it? I think maybe I've killed it. <laughs> I hit the escape key expecting there to be a menu, but that might have been a quit. Okay, anyway, I um, didn't finish the game, which is a bit of a shame. Maybe I'll have another go later. Um, but let's do some quick feedback. So the actual, like, the menu, the story, the lore, that's all really fantastic. It's, um, the movement's really fantastic. I think the, um, mechanics are really good, this idea that you've got to navigate a level, and you've got to kind of... The timer makes me want to do it faster, but there's not really a sense of urgency other than just a better time is better for me. Um, so, you've got to be careful not to hit things, but if you're not hitting things, really, you can go as slowly as you want. Which, for an easy mode, is perfectly fine. It's just exploration, slow moving through the level, um, that's absolutely fine. Um, I would almost expect there to be a secondary mechanic, maybe it's a difficult mode, so that it's not completely crazy for like easy mode, but something like, um, like a, a countdown timer almost. I don't think you want to use battery pickups for the countdown timer, because um, there might not be enough in the level, or you might want to control something else about the level by that. But maybe there's something where there's, like, checkpoints and limited oxygen, although you're a robot, so the limited oxygen doesn't really help. But you want something to increase the urgency. So, like, a countdown timer that gets, like, extended when you hit certain checkpoints might be good, or when there are certain pickups. Like, maybe you need a secondary health system beyond just power. Um, maybe there's toxic gases, or maybe there's acid leaks or something, and you need to get to, like, an acid shower or something to clean the robot off um, before the acid eats through it or something. I don't know. Have a think about that. But if you're wanting to instill a sense of urgency to move on, then the timer needs to really be counting down rather than up. Although having a timer there at all is fantastic. Um... What else can I say? I mean, the art, the tile set, the art is just fantastic. It's brilliant. It's all right. Um, what happens if I hit this? Oh, death. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. So I would say I'd add to that like some sort of explosion before the level ends, because that's just fun. If you just explode the robot before you reset. But a quick reset is always fun as well, because it just means you can keep playing again. You don't have to wait around for like a game over screen or anything. 
that's good. Um, I'd make the shield effect red rather than blue when you knock into something. Uh, oh, not happening now. There we go. There it is. Just because um, red seem red just indicates visually to a player damage rather better than blue does. I think blue would be good if you had like a shield that was protecting you and you're just indicating, oh, you know, something's happened, but it's not that bad. Whereas like, I think some sort of red or orange or just danger color might be better for that. Um, what else can I say? But yeah, it plays really well. Um, you definitely want to add something into the background music. Um, I also like this whole, you know, being able to knock boxes around. I think if it gets to a point where you're really pushed for speed in the game, and you're like trying to make decisions about how to n navigate and maneuver, um, then the boxes are really good, because you kind of can decide to try and ram through the boxes to get to the thing on the other side, rather than having to go the long way around. But I would almost say that the game is a little bit too dark. The dark feeling is ominous, and it helps the mood a lot, and I like the shadows and all that side of things, it's all really good. Um, although it looks like the shadows aren't light-oriented, but that's fine. Considering, I mean, shadows at all are great. Um, but if you're wanting it to be about player decision making and how like they ori how they navigate the level and how they make decisions about where to go and what to do next, they need more information to make those decisions. Because um, right now it's very much just I have no idea what I'm doing, I have no idea where I'm going, um, to find their way around. But it's really I mean for a game jam it's fantastic. I mean good job, it's really good. Really well done. Cool. That's it for me. Um, hope some of the information was really useful. Um, feel free to give me some feedback, things I could do better in the comments. Um, but yeah, I will uh, do this again next month with hopefully some more games. See you later. I don't know.